Welcome back to The Gravy, where we're talking time travel and art inspired by the future and past. Next up, we check out collage artist Peter Lewis to see how he's coping with his childhood's unfulfilled promises of flying cars and moon bases. I'm particularly fond of, of using images from the 1950s and, and 60s. It reminds me of a time as a kid when nothing seemed impossible. You were limited only by your imagination. So, you know, that's an exciting thing to, to get in touch with again. Reassembling and regurgitating and reviving images from the past to make something new and weird and wonderful, that's where I get my kicks. I deliberately use old books and old illustrations, stuff that's kind of come to the end of its useful life. It's, it's gathering dust in an op shop. I'm starting on a new collage and I'm looking for some elements to kick the idea off. Some great stuff here. Just process of elimination. Scan through them, see if it's the kind of things that I'm looking for, and if not, move on. It's pretty cool. Yeah, we'll have that. I'm looking for illustrations rather than photos. Cool old cute stuff like this. That is pretty cool, actually. That, that could be a keeper as well. What else have we got? Let's see. Oh, this is what I need. Not only is there stuff here I can use for the piece I'm working on today, but there's things that'll work in the next piece as well. So I'm getting good value for money for my 20 cent books, believe me. I could be standing here, then as soon as I turn this page, it's a whole idea for a whole piece there, and it's, it's just exciting, the possibilities. Definitely take this one. Yeah, these kittens are cool. I can use these. So the next thing I'm going to do is take these home and start cutting them out, lay a few pieces next to each other, move them around a bit, see what looks good, before I start cutting them out carefully with a scalpel. When I'm composing the image, I'm looking for pieces that work quite nicely in terms of theme or colour or something that's a really strange juxtaposition. Things that don't belong together but can make them work in that way. I'm getting ready to stick this lady down. Once she's in place, everything's going to flow after that. As you can see, it starts to curl almost immediately. All right, that's left me a little bit of space to stick these other pieces underneath. The worst thing that can happen right now is that something will get something stuck in the wrong place. <laughs> Especially with paper to paper, this glue dries almost instantly, so got to concentrate to get it just right. Now, often each piece will have a story. I won't know what that story is until I'm part way through it. You know, a few things will come together and I'll find a narrative to kind of tie them together. This piece is called The Cosmic Joke. It explores the idea that no one really knows what's going to happen in life. Here you've got the cat delivering the punchline that's in a, in a language that only him and his colleagues understand. So even if we did know the punchline to The Cosmic Joke, we wouldn't get it anyway. In a strange symbolic way, this is me and my family. It's um, me here, the, the squid boy, and my wife Liz here, dressed as a tank. She was pregnant with our son Dali at the time, so seeing her as a secure tank was a kind of neat idea. That's Dali growing down the bottom here a happy, fun, heartwarming kind of thing. This is about becoming a father, basically. It's an astronaut down here representing myself, arriving on this strange planet full of weird and, and wonderful things, and, you know, he's, he's expected to know what to do and when, <laughs> with no instruction manual at all and, and a lot of overwhelming things to deal with. Occasionally I'll, I'll deliberately hide something in my work for people to find. If I've got a really busy piece with a lot of different stuff in there, I know people are going to spend a while poring over the details, so I'll hide something in there that's going to shock them or cause them to laugh out loud or, you know, you can never go wrong with a secret hidden genitalia in a piece of work. <laughs> <laughs> Tricky thing here is going to be sticking these little pieces underneath this lady's head before the glue dries. I've worked out exactly where everything's going to go, so it's just a case of sticking it down quickly and confidently. <laughs> I've been making collage art for about 20 years now. A long, long time. You know, my style's kind of progressed and honed over those years to where I arrive at where I am now. In total, I've probably done about 300 collages. At least two thirds of them would be colour. The others would be black, would be black and white. The black and white works that I do, I've kind of grouped together under a heading that I came up with called the Collage Circus. It's all engravings from the 19th century, I think they are. Typically, they're all, all Victorian. What I like about using stuff from that era is you can take stuffy gentlemen in their, in their hats and coats and put them, you know, riding on the back of a hippopotamus so that I can take the piss much more easily out of them. And, and I always enjoy that. Uh, this piece is called Hats Off to Londinium. I consider it to be the, probably the, the best Victorian piece I've ever done, you know, like to cut them out of their native context and drag them kicking and screaming into the 21st century. This piece is called Art Club. A lot of people ask me where I get my ideas from, and as far as I'm concerned, they're floating around in the ether, and if you can pluck one out, then you, you should pluck it out and roll with it. 
This piece is called Serendipity Street. I just love the little self-contained magical world that I've created in this one. And I like how the people in the middle are simply blasé about what's going on around them, that these weird creatures are part of everyday life for them. This is all dry now and ready to start on the final layer. I think I will be doing collages all my lifetime. It's a, a fun thing to do and I always find it rewarding. One day, hopefully, I'll have assistants to do the cutting out for me. It's pretty <laughs> close work and taxing on the eyes. This is the finished piece I've just done. It's called Reach Out to the Stars. It's my take on the idea of star nurseries, areas of space that where stars are born all the time. It's a little bit cute, a little bit out of space, a little bit surreal. Creating the impossible is fun. Any kind of art really gives you free reign to create a whole new world of your own design, taking bits of something and bits of something else and, and putting them together in an impossible but beautifully surreal way. Everybody, I'm DJ House Puppy. I'm Evil Puppy's have favorite house DJ. Cause house music is a healing ability. House music is a magic power of love, which can pretty much heal anything. Sometimes I play house music out of a house. <laughs> I'm actually a house DJ slash producer, cause I just totally make my own music too. When I was not spinning wax in a his eh? I'm chillaxing in my mofo studio, drinking iced tea and making really, really, really sexy beats. Sometimes I just fly around smelling my own farts. As you understand what I mean, let me tell you about the healing magical power of house music. When Attila the Hunter Techno was running around Europe, ripping off drum and bass DJ's heads and putting them on spikes, who was you think chilled that one out? Me! Once I even cured a landmine victim puppy just by playing one of my remixes of a classic house anthem. Woof! Sometimes girls chat me up and I'm like, piss off, I'm in the mix. When I'm chilling in the pool, I think about different ways of loving other puppies. Wafi. Life is tough being a pro DJ. Always flying around in my private jet. Hardly ever knowing what country I'm in. Laos? Pepakura. Not even knowing what track I'm playing. Is the remix? Basically living in the studio. Always in the club, always in the swimming pool, always in the mix, always in the swimming pool. Throwing records around the room just because I can. Woof! 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 Akhtong DJ House Puppy! Coco cool, cool, cool Magazine just said that house music is stink balls, not cool anymore. Quick! Change my name to, uh, DJ Reggae Puppy. Reggae is not cool either. In the music. Change my name to DJ Indie Puppy. Yeah. Indie music has the power to heal. It's the truth.